Okay, this section that is about the backward propagation or the back propagation algorithm. This algorithm, the main objective is just uh, to have um, an algorithm to adjust the W to connection weight WJI and WKJ so that uh, we are able to achieve some training objective. And then I'm going to uh, let you know how we can do that uh, using the back propagation algorithm. Now, the back Backward propagation, that is one of the training algorithms, that is not the only one. We can use different kind of training algorithm for us to assign um, the interconnection weight, that is the W in the new network. Yeah. So when we talk about the fit for new network, we have two modes of operation. I have already explained the fit for mode. The fit for mode that is something like that. When we present x1, x2, xd into this new network, these data, this information will propagate layer to layer and then finally we obtain z1, z2 and zc. That is the feed forward mode. The supervised learning mode that would be, we are going to use this mode for the training of this connection weight. So the training, the idea that is, we are going to reduce the distance that is to reduce the error between the computed output and the target output pattern. Say, if we are going to input X into this new network, and then so we collect some output looked by Z1, ZZ, and then for this particular input, we could, we, we expect that we have some target value, yeah? So if the connection weight W they are not um, the most suitable one. Z1, that would not be the same as T1. Z2 would not be the same as T2. So this is the error. When we find the difference between Z1, Z2, uh, Z1, T1, Z2, T2, and so on, this is the error. If we are able to adjust W so that to bring all the difference between Z and T to be zero, and then that is the, um, that is the thing we would like to do. And also this is the thing the backward propagation algorithm is going to do, yeah? Okay, and now I'm going to give you some ideas about how do we apply the back propagation algorithm to train W in between layers. So the first thing that is, we are going to initialize the network structure so that we need to know how many inputs we have yeah so we have x1 to d so the number of input that is d depends on the application and then so we also need to define the number of output z and then this depends on the the design as well as the application as well yeah so in the hidden layer we can determine how many hidden layers we have in this example i just use one hidden layer and then so we also need to find a number for example we can just simply choose 20 as the number of hidden nodes in this hidden layer and choose the function activation function again as i mentioned in the previous section that this activation function when we are going to apply it the back propagation algorithm, we need this function to be differentiable. You will see the reason why, yeah? And then so now, once we have this network ready, we also need to initialize W in order to calculate the distance, yeah? The difference between the target value at Z1. So, so when we get to this point, we have the network topology ready, and then now we are going to calculate the training error. The training error, that is J, that, that is something like this. This is the sum of squared error. Okay, so we are going to look into a little bit details about how do we define the training error, why this is the training error, yeah? So we need to, for the training, we also need to prepare a training data set in the next page. And then so I'm going to show you the training data set as well as the training error. And now this is the training data set. Assume that we have a free input neural network and this neural network will give you two output. So this is a general structure, D input, Z output. Yeah. So when we talk about free input, that means we only have X1, X2 and X3. Yeah. 
So when we talk about two output, we only have Z1, Z2. We do not have this bit. Yeah. So three input, two output. So this is the training data set. And then so we call this is the sample one or the pattern one. It means that when x123 take these three value, minus 0 0.2, minus 7.1, 4.7. And then so we can just sim simply fit this value into this new network with the corresponding value of w and the defined function. And then we can call that output z1 and z2. OK, uh, now I'm going to consider this pattern this sample that is x123 equals this value so we fit this value into this new network and then this new network according to this w value we have the output 1.6 and 2.8 yeah this value will change if you're going to change the w value yeah anyway this training data set, we have the input matrix right here. We also have the target output. It means that if we are going to input this pattern into this new network, we expect that the output should produce 0 0.2 for Z1 and should produce minus 0 0.5 for T2. Yeah? Now you can just find out that Z1, that is 1.6. That is not 0 0.2. Z2, that is 2.8, that is not minus 0 0.5. That means that W have, these W values have to be addressed so that we are going to bring the actual output 1.6, 2.8 to closer to these two values, 0 0.2 minus 0 0.5. So that is the bandwidth propagation is going to do, yeah? So now, Corresponding to this input sample, we can compute the training error. We denote that as J, yeah? So, because we only have two output, so that's why K, that is from one to two, it means that we are going to have T1 minus Z1, yeah? So T1 minus Z1, and then take the square root, yeah? So this is T1 minus Z1, take, uh, I mean take the square, not the square root, and then plus, T2 minus Z2, take the square, and then sum it up, and then so we can represent in this particular form. Yeah, So this is sum of the square error of the output, the difference between target and um, the output Z. Yeah? So now, if you are going to substitute the value into this equation, according to this particular pattern, yeah, according to this pattern, T1, that is 0 0.2. So I'm going to put 0 0.2 right here. Set 1, that is the actual output of this new network. So that is 1.6. So I put 1.6 right here. And T2, that is the target value for Z2. Now that is minus 0 0.5. So we have minus 0 0.5 right here. Set 2, that is 2.8. Yeah, so we have 2.8. So this J will give you this value. This value that is not zero, it means that this is not a perfect network. So we have to adjust W so that to bring or to uh, reduce the value of J by adjusting W value right here. Now why we have one half here, this is a constant. That means uh, we are going to scale to J. Yeah. The reason why we have one, we have half here, that is mainly later on, we are going to do the differentiation the power 2 right here we cancel out this 2 yeah so that means in general whether we have what whether we have 1 over 2 here it it is not very important yeah but uh, to make the mathematics look elegant so we are going to put 1 over 2 right here that is to cancel out this square term later on when we do the differentiation yeah okay uh, now going back to this diagram, this diagram. Now we understand what the training error it is because right here we still have the data set. When we present the input, the data set, the example into this new network, we can compute the training error. According to this training error, what we are going to do is just to do, to find the change of J with respect to W. Note that this bold face W, that is, a matrix which is a collection of all these W elements right here. So 
W could be a matrix that is W11, W12, and then uh, many value right here. That is a collection of all these connection right weights right here. So delta W that is minus eta minus eta that is the learning weight that is greater than zero. We are going to choose this value because um um um, um if we are going to choose a very large value the learning will become unstable if we are going to choose a very small value and then so the learning will be very slow yeah we do not have a systematic way to determine this value but uh, sometimes by try and error yeah and then so this puzzle j puzzle w that is with respect to every one of this element that is with respect to every one of the w in this network once we find delta w and then we are going to update the weight using this update equation when we get to this point yeah so you can see that this is a loop in the first loop we compute delta w according to this training error and then so we find this delta w and then this wm M, that is the current value of W in this new network. We are going to add this delta W defined by this equation and then update it into the next uh, W in the next iteration. So we are going to repeat this process. Yeah, we are going to repeat this process until this J value is sufficiently small enough. The ideal case that is T equals Z, it means that the output that that is exactly the same as the target value that is the ideal output but in reality we cannot achieve that that means we are going to minimize j because it depends on a lot of factors for example whether this network is large enough to learn the function if it is too large and then so the learning may not be very effective if it is too small and then so we do not have sufficient expression capability for the learning yeah okay so when we look at this delta w as i mentioned that this bow face w that is a collection of all this small w in these two layers yeah and then so when we look at this one of the term right here for example maybe this is called uh, wkj and then so so we can find out this value and then we are going to add it to the current value of wkj and we find the updated value of wkj um, in one of this link we are going to do this update for all the links right here and then the same for WJI. Find the delta WJI and then add it to the current value of WJI, that is the connection weight for all this linked, and then update it. And then repeat this process and to reduce the training error. Later on, I'm going to show you the pseudo code about this. And then to, in the next um in the next slide, I'm going to show you how do we define this delta WKJ as well as this delta WJI. Yeah, WKJ that is the connection weight in between hidden layer and output layer. WJI that is the connection weight in between input and hidden layer. Okay, now we are going to look into the details. <laughs> 